Charlie Brennan on the Voice of St. Louis. Congressman John Chimkus, Republican from Central and Southern Illinois, is in the House. And it's uh, always good to have you aboard. How are things in Washington, D.C., Congressman? Well, I'm heading back today. Uh, that's a day early uh, than usual because of schedule. I'm now the ranking member on the Health Subcommittee, which is the senior Republican, which is kind of amping up based upon the new law, amping up some of my responsibilities and meetings and stuff that I, that I have to do. So uh, it, uh, it these are very difficult times. I, I, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. They are just tough from spending, from debt to the environment to, you know, we still have people, um, men and women deployed overseas and um, it's not a lot of fun, but it's, it is a lot of work. The deficit as a percentage of GDP is growing, 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 and people keep saying, well, that's really Greece's problem because their deficit is 14% of GDP and you know, if you add up their debt, it equals their GDP. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. I think in uh, 2010, our deficit as a percentage of GDP will be about 10%. You are right. I mean, you're right. Moody's just did. I just saw a little report today, and it, ours will be 18% 2013 or 2018. Uh, and then, you know, Moody's, who if they, just like a state, just like a, a company, if they downgrade bonds, Less people are willing to, to purchase it. That's what less people want to, uh, and and a, and a lower interest rate on the return, uh, less money. It, it's there. It's not uh, good financial times. So then the question is, well, how do you how do you deal with that? And if people understand the real budget of the of the national government, four fifths are things that we don't control. We don't control Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and interest on the debt. Only one fifth is what we'll, you know, we're going to have in a fight about uh, will they even put a budget resolution on the floor? Uh, that's only the discretionary part of this. It's only one fifth. It, it, you've heard me say it before. If we really want to get serious about our, our debt, we're going to have to look at the entitlement programs and reform them. But what are we doing? We're expanding them. Well, let me ask you this. The people are riding in the streets of Greece because in Greece, people are really used to their government programs. But we're getting there, too. Think of how the typical American today can get so many purchases paid for, or at least mm, subsidized by Uncle Sam. The car purchase through cash for clunkers, the home purchase through the home tax credit, weatherization for that home, uh, college education, uh, not to mention health care, which, of course, just passed in March. And I'm wondering if uh, Americans are becoming like their European counterparts, where they're really used to a lot of government subsidies. I guess I was surprised, Congress, Congressman, when I uh, saw a New York Times piece that it used to be people on uh, on food stamps were kind of derided, but no more, because today one out of eight Americans is on food stamps. Kind of shocking. It's very shocking, and it and is a, trem- a, a tremendous problem that we have to address. I think we're losing something as a nation, this rugged individualism, and, and I... I think we're just going to have to make the tough decision. Now, people say, well, politicians, you never make you never make the tough decision. We'll see what happens in November. If we're back in the majority, I, I do believe we're going to uh, make the tough decisions. Remember, the, for the conservatives, we were thrown out. 2006, 2008, we took the electoral bath. And a lot of that was a frustration with us not being who we advertised ourselves to be. Uh, we'll only have one other shot. To, to bring back some sanity, and, and we'll see if that happens in November. Well, I used to blast President Bush for spending too much money, and uh, his deficits ran, I think his highest was about $450 million, right? We're pikers. We were pike compared to these guys. Where, uh, where are we now? Uh, this year's debt will be... We one point, well, the deficit, deficit will be, uh, I think it's I think it's down, t- it had a tick down. I think it's uh, uh, 1.3, I mean, uh, yeah, one, $1.3 trillion. It used to be uh, the national debt at about thirteen and a half trillion dollars. Mm. So, uh, well, you know, KMOX Radio ran a story last week that um, we're going to spend another six billion dollars on weatherizing homes. Yeah, I voted against it. <laughs> well, the only, the only point I make is uh, you can weatherize a home, spend thousands of dollars doing it, and one broken window will negate all the benefits. Right, and and it's uh, it's the debate. It was an interesting debate because it went through the committee. Uh, and, you know, it's just there, everything we're going to do now between, well, even before this is all focused on jobs. I mean, even though there may be some stabilization, uh, we're still at, what, uh, 
eight percent unemployment, seven million uh, unemployed. So they're going to use any excuse to expand government on the basis of creating jobs. And really, you have to have private sector jobs. I said this in, on Friday in Mount Vernon when I got the the Chamber Award. Private sector jobs pay for public sector jobs. And we have to incentivize. If you want to be an employee, you have to have an employer. See, and that's the thing about Europe is that's concerns. Now people are looking at, well, if I want a job, I want to go work for the government. And, and that the government jobs aren't going to continue to pay the fare for all the entitlement programs that we have. Those are the sectors that have increased recently, government and health care. So it, they say that this is a, a man session because guys are typically, you know, in other industries, including manufacturing and construction, which have been hit. I am told, according to government statistics, that one out of five men right now, uh, ages 25 to 54, is uh, out of work. And Lauren Sumners, uh, the president's economist, has said, we're going to have to get used to the new normal, or that's going to be one in six for the future. I reject that premise, and this sounds like the Jimmy Carter. We're going to have to get to re- <laughs> accept this as a new normality. And, and so... Where's this fighting American spirit? The issue is you have to free up the entrepreneurial skills. You've got to, if someone's going to raise capital, assume risk, they have to get a return. You just can't always beat the, the, the titans of America in the head and say, every little dollar you earn, we're going to take it away from you because they're not going to invest any money. It's the same thing with health care. It's the same thing with climate. All these issues Hurt job creation, do not help job creation. Well, it seems to me there should be some incentive to manufacture a widget in the United States. And I'll give you uh, the prime example, which I probably bored you with the last time you were here. We closed down the Ram plant in Fenton this past summer. Uh, Chrysler got part of the bailout. And where is that Ram now made? In Mexico and in Canada. I don't like that. I I, I think if they're going to get the bailout, they should be manufacturing here. Well... Bottom line is there shouldn't be bailouts to begin with. I mean, if you believe in the capitalist model, you raise capital, people buy stock. If that's a mismanaged company, they go broke. The the people who own the company go broke. You have assets that then are valued at something, and then people will jump in and pick up the pieces. It's, it's, it's not compassionate. It doesn't cause for a soft landing. And I think we, uh, uh, I would say well-intentioned, try to have a soft landing for this economy but I don't think you get the turnaround as quick. Well, I think uh, it's possible, and this is kind of beyond our purview. I think Americans want everything to be soft now. They want a soft landing not only for their mental health. They don't want to worry at all or have any anxiety. They want, uh, you know, Prozac for that. And then when it comes to the jobs, they never want to be, uh, you know, without money, without, uh, you know, the the, the possibility of uh, being between assignments. So there's always got to be a benefit from the federal government at all times, from cradle to grave, for every American. I think that's this whole independent movement out there. Uh, I, I would agree with you, but I think that's part of the anger and the frustration and the fear. The fear is now more that we're moving that direction and people are saying time out. And again, we'll have to see. We don't know. Politics takes a uh, you know a long time until November. Things could change. But I think that's really the 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 anger and the frustration is people. There are there is a group of people who do not want to go in this direction. Hey, let's take a quick break here and come back with your phone calls for Congressman John Shimkus, who's in the house.